Challenge Ham. It's early. It's, uh, well, it's not that early. It's 6.30 a.m. But uh, we're doing some squats and deadlifts. We got a hypertrophy workout. So we actually vlogged this workout about maybe a week ago. We'll see when the video is posted. Uh, and on that day, I had ascending sets with descending reps on squats. And we got that again. So last week, I had sets of 10, 8, and 6 on the competition style squat where it gets a little bit harder each set. This week we have the same thing, but nine, sevens, and fives are gonna be the repetition counts we're hitting. So we got that first on comp squats, then we got some deadlifts after. Um, kind of a heavier set of six, I believe it is. I gotta double check on the program, uh, but nothing too, too heavy. This is the secondary day on um, kind of my version of the Prime program. I am altering it just because of some of the injuries and things I've incurred. Uh, that's one of our group coaching programs available over at prime-strength.com. It's really a program aimed at just making you an all-around savage on the barbell. You're going to be doing a lot of mobility work. You're going to be doing a lot of work towards like function in your core and hips and things like that. You're going to be training for powerlifting and you're going to be doing a lot of bodybuilding work. So it kind of combines all aspects of fitness. So we're going to start with squats. We're going to take you through those. Then we're going to go on to deadlifts and our accessory work. And today specifically, I want to talk about the cues I use on the squats, especially. And this also kind of applies to the deadlift. We're going to talk about foot pressure, but I'm going to get warmed up to about maybe my first working set of nine. I'm aiming for something around RP four to five, where it's like a decently challenging set, but nothing near failure. And then we keep getting heavier from there. Last week, I hit 325, 345, and 365. So this week, I'm trying to beat that by at least like 10 pounds on each set. Ryan Little. Japan. Okay guys, so getting up here to my first working set, this is 345. So last week, this was the second set I did for eight reps. This week, we're doing it for nine here on the first set of these ascending sets. This should feel pretty smooth. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little beat up. I'm a little fatigued, I'm tired. I recently reintroduced squatting again from the ground up since that adductor tear. And then on top of that, I'm actually finally getting back to benching some challenging weights. I haven't been benching heavy in a while. So shoulders are feeling tight and achy. Uh, hips are feeling a little tight, everything's feeling a little beat. And I just like to point that out because I am by no means a professional lifter in the sense that like, I don't just lift, go home, live off of social media fame. While I do posts on YouTube and that helps my career, I'm like working a lot and I'm really tired today. I'm off about maybe six hours of sleep, which for me is really, really low. So like, dude, it gets fucking hard sometimes when you're in here, especially this early in the morning. Um, so I'm gonna hit this at a nine though. The goal is just to move well. And this is why RP and the submax approach is really good. The strength feels good today, but I know I gotta control the movement. That's why I wanna talk about it, is my foot pressure. So I'm gonna have Luis get a further back angle, maybe back over here. So you can see my feet and my whole body and how it's, the, the feet really control what happens upstream. If you go onto your toes, everyone knows that's bad, but they don't understand why. The problem is, is, is you're just eliminating so many joints to help contribute to the even distribution of the load and how much force you can produce through these joints. So we really want to distribute tension evenly throughout the lower system. You might be someone who's more quad dominant and pressures their toes a little bit more than say their heels, but we should never get to the point where pressure is just changing dramatically. And the thing to look for is if your shoe is remaining completely still on the ground. What you'll notice about my set is the lip of my heel and my toes never budge during my set. They get glued to the ground. And if they do budge, that's when I know I'm fucking something up. My best squat sets have always come when my foot pressure feels like completely glued to the earth. Something we talked about in a recent podcast with Dylan. So let's get this first set.
So, second set here, 365 pounds. This is a squat bar, so it weighs 55 pounds. Um, again, foot pressure is a huge piece of the battle, but not the whole battle. So, loading parameter through the eccentric. I'm trying to really focus on breaking at the knees and hinging at the hips equally. And this is really important for even distribution of tension, is you want both joints to load with equal distribution. Now, again, you might bias a quad dominance in your squat, or you might bias a hip dominance in your squat. Neither is correct or incorrect. It's just a matter of what's strongest for you at your given leverages, and that can change over time. But you, the, the kind of rules of thumb that I always follow is one, break the hips and knees at the same time, and two, feel both joints loading, and naturally one will just bias a little bit more than the other. Go for seven reps here. Turned it on a little bit for that. 
always that time of month, huh? Okay, so just hit up 535 for a set of six, our belt list. Belt list training is really misunderstood. So the way a weightlifting belt works is mostly through proprioception because you have this giant thing around your waist touching your abs and low back. Your core uh, increases in activation through the means of proprioception. Essentially the physical touch allows you to become more aware of those muscle bellies and you're able to utilize them to a higher degree. It also works through pressurization as everyone mostly learns about belts. But when you remove the belt, the goal is to try to get your abs to engage just as hard as you do when you have the belt on. And this is where you can easily do beltless work wrong. And if you perform beltless work and you feel like your low back is overly fatigued or hurt or giving out too much, it's a high sign that you don't actually know how to utilize your abs in a deadlift or a squat. So I've always incorporated beltless work mostly as almost like uh, a prerequisite to going full gear in the sense that if you can't lift beltless with really good ab tension, you're not gonna get the most out of your belt anyway. And you're gonna utilize it a little bit too much like a crutch and not to its highest capability. So right there, I was really focused on just abs on that whole set. It's very tiring. My abs are like dead now after that. But it's very easy for a lot of people to just feel their low back. You should feel your low back more and it should promote kind of a dominance of core uh, as where when you have the belt on, your core is a little less of a limiting factor. So there's a, a lot of depth and nuance there and I have to do a video on this, but killed that set out, pretty happy with that. Now we got a bunch of accessory work. I'm gonna try to blaze through because we're a little late today, starting the lift a little later. Uh, but yeah, let's go on to the accessories. Okay, so we got uh, leg curls here. Uh, last week I did these single limb and that's what the protocol calls for. But I'm gonna go bilateral today, meeting both legs at the same time and really focus on the, on the eccentric and the lengthening portion. So ever since I tore my hamstring and adductor complex, um, I really wanna get under a lot of eccentric loading. And weirdly, when I go bilateral on this, I feel like I can control the eccentric much better, which is probably a sign I should do more controlled eccentrics single limb and just go even lighter than needed. But I want to get a little load on there today and make sure my hamstrings are staying healthy. And then we got some ab and core work. So what you'll notice about this portion of the training cycle though, we're really reductive, especially on the lower body with accessory work. Doing all that squat volume, all that deadlift volume, the other heavy day has a ton of squat and deadlift volume. And you don't want to overwork when you're trying to adapt strength. A little goes a long way for strength adaptation. When you're going for hypertrophy, you're going to need a lot of accessory work. So at this phase, we're uh, kind of Xing out a lot of that and focusing on mostly adaptation on the big barbells. We're still doing the important stuff. So knee flexion, and then we got a lot of hip flexion and ab work that we'll finish up with. So with these, I think a lot of people, when they see like five exercises on a protocol, the reason that can seem easy is maybe to a beginner it could be because they just can't exert themselves at the same level an intermediate or advanced athlete can. But more importantly, I think most people approach, like let's say this leg curl, so lazy. And they just kind of go through the motions. Right now I'm controlling my pelvis by keeping my abs engaged so I don't overextend the low back too much. I'm really controlling the eccentric. I'm controlling knee position to amount for how much hip rotation I have. There's so much going on up here and these are fucking tiring. Like normally I could just heave this around. I swear to God, I could get like 15 to 20 reps. But when I orient it in a way that matches what I'm trying to get out of it from an adaptation standpoint, getting the hip rotation exactly where I want it to where I buy hip internal rotation 
getting my pelvis out of extension, or excuse me, anterior pelvic tilt, low back out of extension, all of a sudden these get incredibly hard and it requires an extreme amount of total body control. So when people tell me, like, oh, I'm not doing that much volume on your protocol in the group coaching, which I've, I've had that critique, admittedly, you're not getting the most out of it because you're not putting in the most. You should be mastering your leg curls exactly how you master your squat or deadlift. And if you're not, you're not gonna grow optimally. and not change the load because we're just low on time. I got to run to work after this and go zoom some clients. But these are, are really hard. With all of our one-on-one -on -one clients, I have them film every accessory exercise. I even have them film their stretching. Like it's not as simple as just looking at a video and being like, okay, I can do that. There's so many internal cues with every single movement you're doing. It's incredibly nuanced. But humans are huge reductionists and they love to make everything simplistic and easy to understand. Guess what, it's not. If you want to get the most out of something, everything in life is complex unless you want it to be simple. If you go simple, you're gonna get simple results. I don't want to be simple. Okay, so we got some hanging leg raises and I'm gonna do them into that L sit on the way down, really trying to keep that hollow body, which just means like not overextending. So I don't want my low back to look like this in the bottom or even like this. I want to maintain this position as much as possible, spine neutral, which is really hard to do. And the thing about this is it's going to lengthen my torso, which again, a lot of people don't realize the abs draw in. Some of you guys have seen that video that went viral a few years back but with the Chinese weightlifters who brace by drawing their core in. Not everyone actually does a distended brace. So the abs have a lot of functions and those deep core muscles actually draw everything in, specifically the TBA and the psoas. But that's a whole other biomechanic video for another time. So I'm trying to really stay long and tight in the core. I explained this more a little bit in the last video. So we're just gonna get to it. I'm really fatigued, so I have no clue how many I'm gonna get. So difference is I wanna hold this position, not this, okay? So lats engage, core engage. deadlifts. Oh man, I'm ready for this fucking taper to take me away. Everything just kind of hurts right now. That's the reality of this lifting shit. So sometimes I think people don't realize like how much us, even us YouTubers that have been doing this for 10, 11 years now, coming up on 11 years, like my body hurts most days. Like I don't move around that well until I start warming up. And there's a time and a place where I move better. In the off season, I don't feel as beat up. But right now that I'm pushing the deadlift so much, low back feels smoked, lats are tired, shoulders and elbows and everything achy. Just part of the game. So we're gonna do one more set here. I won't film that though. I'm gonna film the Copenhagen planks after, and then we're done. Then cardio. Okay, Copenhagen planks. I talked about these last week. Sometimes I get insecure. I'm like, oh fuck, I'm showing the same shit week after week. That's what works, man. So it's funny, I manipulate rep range, intensity, exertion a lot, almost every single week. We're doing something different there. Exercise selection, I need to do a video on, which I am. But I manipulate accessories usually every four weeks, unless it's an accessory I have a lot of momentum on, then I might keep it around for eight weeks. 
Uh, big movements I keep around usually for eight weeks minimum. So say I'm doing like a high bar squat, I'm probably gonna keep that in for two blocks, unless it's like really non-specific. Front squat I might pull after a block. But generally speaking, um, you do a lot of the same movements for at least four weeks straight. So anyway, Copenhagen planks again, adductor, core complex. I'm gonna slip the foot in here. You can see that right side was struggling. Part of that is because I did it in the secondary position of the uh, superset there, or whatever you want to call it. And so it's a little bit more fatigued, but secondarily, that's the side that tore. So it's very unstable right now, especially when I implement an instability factor. So basically, that's the training, guys. I'm gonna do a little cardio probably after this. I gotta film some stuff for the group coaching. If you guys are interested in coaching, hit us up. You can sign up for a free diagnostic meeting using the description box down below. Check out our programs over at prime-strength.com. Comment in the videos, guys. If you guys want to see more like this, let me know. Give me a comment. It really helps out the channel, and I'll catch you guys in future videos.